The following stories are from members of Hanmam Church in South Korea. They aired on a Korean Christian TV network called C Channel and were dubbed in English. Hi, I'm Sung Soo Kim from Hanmam Church in Chuncheon. I lived my life with an immature attitude, so I always thought of myself as the ugly duckling. Then through Jesus' resurrection, I met the living God, and I realized that my true identity had been a swan all along. I want to share with you about how all my problems were solved when the truth set me free. My parents had really wanted a son, and after four daughters, they finally got one. I was the second daughter, and I grew up caring too much about what they thought. That was because the moment my brother was born, I thought the chances of me receiving any love from my parents were pretty slim. So my sisters and I competed for their love. My older sister was so beautiful that the local photography studio had her portrait in their display. The sister right below me got attention just because she was the third daughter. And my youngest sister was incredibly cute with her milky complexion, so my parents adored her. Our friends and family always talked about how pretty my sisters were, but they never said that about me. My own mother never even once told me that I was pretty. In fact, once she told me that I was really ugly and that she had no idea who I took after in the family. Although nowadays, people tell me I look just like my mom. (laughs) Plus, in elementary school, I would get into fights with the boys, as kids often do at that age. I was taller and stronger than they were, so whenever they tried to bother me, I would show them who's boss with a broom. (laughs) Since they couldn't win by strength alone, they would make fun of my face and call me flat-nosed and clown cheap. That was how I began to get hurt about my appearance, and since I was the least pretty among my sisters, I felt inferior all the time, even if nobody said anything. That's why I decided to become the good daughter and receive love that way instead. When my relatives gave me allowance, I didn't use a cent of it. Instead, I gave it all to my mom. I also worked extremely hard to help her clean the house. I thought that I should always be on the lookout for my parents' needs and get them what they needed before they even asked. They began to praise me as the good daughter or the most perceptive daughter. I wasn't the pretty one, but I was certainly the good one. When you become a teenager, you care a lot about your appearance, right? I had no confidence in my look, so I decided to invest everything in my personality. When the new semester came, I memorized all my classmates' names, and I approached them first and called them by name. This made me lots of friends, and I was told many times that I had a great personality. Thanks to that, I could dodge comments about my face. After I graduated from school, I went to a job interview for a big company. At the final interview session, the interviewer took one look at me and said, You're hired. Everyone was surprised. But I found out that the reason I was hired was because he thought I looked like someone who knew how to drink and party. (laughs) The truth is, I can't drink at all and I can't sing and I can't dance. So I gave up on that company and kept going to job interviews. I was just about sick of the job search when I ended up at one interview where all the other applicants around me were so pretty. I thought I couldn't stand a chance. So I decided to go out with a bang and confidently answered all the interview questions. Then I was hired. I was so surprised. It turned out that the other lady who got hired ended up in administration while I ended up in the statistics department. I thought, figures. The male employees were excited, of course not because of me, but because of the lady in admin. (laughs) But whatever cruel twist of fate this was, that pretty lady and I ended up working side by side. Everyone, including the female employees, talked about how angelic she was and how her eyes were like two beautiful pools of spring. Then they'd say, I look like a troll and hurt my feelings. So I became a workaholic in order to close the gap between us with competence. I worked day and night and I worked extremely hard. As a result, I made company history and was awarded model employee only six months after I was hired. I also got a special promotion. I was finally getting recognition. After that, my popularity skyrocketed, and eventually my boss even proposed to me. It was the first time anyone had ever proposed to me, and I was worried that I would never get married if I missed this chance. My parents weren't worried about my beautiful older sister's chances to find a man, but they must have been worried about mine, because they gave me the permission to get married before my older sister. But there was a problem. I went to meet my future in-laws, and my fiancé's mom really didn't like me. She opposed the marriage and said it was because my face made me look too scary. I felt so humiliated that I called off the wedding without a second thought. Time went by, and my friends got married one by one. Whenever we would meet, they'd bring their husbands along. I was too hurt to meet or date anyone else, and seeing my friends while I was the only one not married gave me a hard time. It was awkward to see them, but it hurt my pride not to see them. I thought it was hopeless to do anything about my face, but I could at least do something about my body. So I decided to get skinny. I at least had some confidence in my long, thin legs. So I started a high-protein diet that was popular at the time. For this diet, you had to eat only meat, three meals a day. I managed to do that for a few months. 
then my figure became amazing. But the joy didn't last. Because of my unbalanced nutrition intake, my hair started falling out. <laughs> well, I couldn't lose all my hair, so I had to stop the diet. But still, I was very skinny by that point, and I walked around wearing the shortest mini skirt I could find plus 4-inch heels. It made me feel more and more confident. Then one day while I was walking on the street, I heard a male voice calling from behind me. Excuse me. Excuse me. So I turned around. The man looked taken aback, but he showed me his ID and business card and asked me if I wanted to have coffee with him. Things like that happened a few more times. My figure restored some confidence in me, and I started dating a man I used to know. I was hoping that things would go well and we would end up getting married. But things didn't go as I had planned. When I went to meet his parents, they said that I had such huge cheekbones that I looked like I would have hard luck. Plus, they said I didn't look like someone who would serve her in-laws well. When the same thing happened again, I was devastated. I was hurt yet again by people judging me by my looks before they even got to know who I was, and this drove me to depression. When the depression got worse, I thought I should kill myself. But I was scared of committing suicide. Also, I thought I wouldn't get into heaven if I killed myself, so instead, I decided to get plastic surgery. I thought if something went wrong during surgery and I died, at least it wouldn't be suicide and I wouldn't get sent to hell for it. So I found a famous plastic surgeon in Gangnam. When I went to his office, I ran into a famous actress and she was stunning. I thought that if this guy was her doctor, he must be very, very good. When I met the doctor, he said that we should cut down my cheekbones and make my nose sharper. Then he gave me a quote and started explaining the surgery process and it was horrible to hear. He said he would cut open an area on my scalp and pry my skin off of my face. Then he would saw down my cheekbones, make my nose pointier, stretch my skin back over, and sew it back into my scalp again. He was explaining the process in such detail that I wondered if he was trying to scare me away because he thought I was a hopeless case. Who would ever want to get plastic surgery after hearing all that? But I still decided to do it. <laughs> after we set a date for the surgery, I had nightmares every night. My dreams were about having my face sawed open and blood pouring out all over the place. I couldn't sleep and I was having such a hard time that I asked a friend to pray for me. Then, after she heard what I was going through, she told me that getting plastic surgery wasn't the will of God. She showed me Bible verses to support what she said. She said it was sin to alter your God-given body in such a way. When I heard that, I was honestly resentful to God. He had made some people beautiful and some people as ugly as me. God was supposed to exist, so why didn't he know my pain? Did he know what it was like to be rejected by someone? I thought I was nothing but God's mistake and my parents' burden. But deep down, what I really wanted was for someone to stop me from getting the surgery. Even God had thrown me away, so what was the use of getting this awful surgery so that I could please anyone else? I decided to just give up and call my plastic surgeon to cancel the appointment. His reply was an all too easy, sure, no problem. Clearly, he hadn't been sure if the surgery would be a success. <laughs> After that day, I completely gave up on my appearance and became a workaholic again. I decided that I would only live for myself from now on. I made money and used it to buy good food, travel, and learn all the things I wanted to learn. But my heart was always empty, and I wasn't happy. Around that time, something shocking happened in my life. I lost a close cousin due to a car accident. His death was completely unexpected. I hurried over to the hospital. And when I saw him lying on the patient's bed, he looked so peaceful, like he was asleep. It was the first time I had seen a dead body. I was just staring at it for a while, and I didn't know what to think. His body was right there, but his soul was gone. My mind was reeling. What I thought then was, the body isn't everything. If the soul leaves it, it dies. Then the terror of death washed over me. After my cousin's funeral, I thought my true problem wasn't about my body, but my soul. Where did the soul go after you died and your body rotted away? Did heaven and hell really exist? Wasn't death the most important problem I had to solve in my life? All I had been caring about were my flesh and bones, but the real issue I had to resolve was the issue of the soul. As I kept thinking about this, I couldn't eat or sleep. Life felt meaningless and I didn't want to do anything. Then one day, a friend called me up and asked me if I was still skinny. I told her that I was, and she introduced me to a man. I had no one to rely on, and life was so hard at that point, so I met him without really thinking about it. My first impression of him was that he looked so unfriendly. I didn't have much hopes in this man, but as we kept talking, I found out how thoughtful and gentlemanly he was. He was a very good listener. He was so different from his looks. 
I thought that he was just like me, constantly misunderstood for his appearance. Then my heart went out to him. I wanted to get to know him better, and I thought it would be nice if I could rely on him. We kept dating, but my issue wasn't being resolved, and I would go around talking to people about death, trying to get their advice. But nobody could give me a definite answer to this problem. Then sometime later, I got a call from a friend. She had been a model Christian with such a great passion for God that I would always listen to what she had to say. But this time, she had called me up to tell me that her faith had been wrong and that she had finally met Jesus for real. I didn't understand exactly what she was talking about, but when she said that she had resolved the issue of death, I was so surprised that I asked her to see me as soon as she could, and through her, I attended a small church meeting. During my first worship service there, the small church leader said that the Almighty God had come to this world as a man for me because he loved me, and I said to myself, yeah, right, he didn't come just for me, he came for us. In this way, I couldn't really listen to the word at first. But then I remembered one verse. The true light which gives light to everyone was coming into the world. And I kept being reminded of the word everyone in this verse. If it really was for everyone, he had come for me too. When I thought about the fact that he had even come for someone like me who was ugly and had no self-confidence, my misunderstandings about God began to go away. I wanted to know this Jesus better. Then I attended the retreat, and I met the Jesus who had died on the cross for my sin of being the Lord of myself and living however I wanted, and I repented in front of God. I came to accept Jesus who had risen again to solve all of my problems, especially death, as my Lord. After that, I heard the pastor's repeated preachings about the resurrection and came to realize that the resurrection was the key to believing everything in the scriptures. Then God's word became real to me. I began to hear all the word in the Bible as a confession of love from God to me. The pastor proclaimed that Jesus had carried our poverty and disease. In Isaiah, it said that Jesus had no form or majesty that we should look at him and no beauty that we should desire him. Jesus had no beauty? Honestly, when you see Jesus in paintings, he looks so handsome. I never thought of Jesus as ugly before. At that moment, what I heard from these words was that Jesus had carried my ugliness as well. Jesus also had been someone without desirable beauty, and he had been rejected by people in this world too. Jesus had known all about the pain of being rejected and hurt because of your appearance, like me. When I thought about that, it broke my heart. He had come to this world in the form of a servant. In the form of a servant. I was so thankful for him having come to this world after he had abandoned his throne in heaven. But at the same time, his love was too immense for me to take. He knew that the creatures he had made would curse him, insult him, blame him, and reject him. But he still came. A love like that doesn't exist in this world. When all of this became clear and sure through the resurrection, it all became that much more real to me, and I even came to desire my own risen body. As I read about the disciples on their way to Emmaus, not being able to recognize Jesus, I realized that the risen body was different. It looked different from the body you had in this world. That was why our ancestors of faith in the early church had desired a better risen body and hadn't refused torture. That was how my meandering due to my appearance was put to an end. The wisest way was to live for the Lord while you still lived on this earth in your flesh so that you could obtain the better risen body. And because he had risen to become my Lord, I had nothing to worry about or be oppressed about. So there was no reason for me to rely on anyone anymore. I immediately shared the gospel with my boyfriend and I told him that if he wanted to be with me, he had to come to church every Sunday and that if he wanted to marry me, He would have to sign a written contract guaranteeing that he would pay tithes and stop ancestor worship. He hadn't even asked me to marry him yet. (laughs) But what was amazing was that he began to drive me to my church in Chunchun every week. At the time, the new road didn't exist yet, so during vacation periods, it sometimes took us seven hours to get there. But my boyfriend didn't even take a break as he drove. Meanwhile, I would cover my face with a newspaper and doze in the back seat. (laughs) My small church leader said that he seemed like he would be a good husband and we got married. His parents didn't object to our marriage, of course. 
When I met them for the first time, his father was very happy with me and said that I looked so friendly. <laughs> I was grateful that they'd accepted me as their daughter-in-law, and I wanted to serve them well. And when I served them with the love of Jesus, they ended their decades of ancestor worship and began to hold memorial services instead. Amen. I had thought I was the ugly duckling, but in God's eyes, I had been a beautiful and precious swan. When I found out what my true identity was, all I had left to do was sharing the gospel. After I met Jesus, I was filled with passion for his love, and that made me share the gospel with my coworkers. Then we came together one by one till seven of us formed a Christian meeting. One of my coworkers became a small church leader who faithfully serves her group members to this day. My youngest sister, who used to have a pale and adorable face, became part of our church, and her husband became a servant for Christ who shared the gospel of the resurrection with hundreds of his alumni in the auditorium of his alma mater. I even shared the gospel with a famous actor when I met him by chance in the subway. Because it was my mission to share the gospel and raise disciples, I shared the gospel with my neighbors and raised up a small church. At first, it was hard because people had misunderstandings about me due to my appearance, but that couldn't stop Jesus' love. My current job is tutoring children, and I meet them every week. One child took a look at my face and said, Mrs. Kim, what's inside your cheek? In the past, I would have turned red with embarrassment but not anymore. I told him, there's an amazing story inside my cheeks. Do you want to hear it? Then I shared the risen Jesus with him. One of my students is a child actor, so he says that he is good at reading people's faces. And he told me, Mrs. Kim, I think you are really pretty. He told me that it was because I always looked so happy and cheerful, and that made me beautiful. It was because of Jesus that I had become someone like that. <laughs> Today I begin another very happy day because the risen Jesus is my Lord. Jesus has risen, so I will rise again too. Thank you. If you'd like to see more stories about how the gospel changed lives, visit us at facebook.com slash HMUOnlyJesus or Google us at HMUOnlyJesus.